Welcome to this 2D RPG course. We're going to be building a 2D RPG game in Godot with many different features. Throughout this project, we'll be learning many different nodes and usages, such as for the player, we'll be going over character body 2D, animations using animated sprites, animation players, animation trees, and then we'll be going over auto tiling using tile maps. We'll also go over simple AI and NPC logic using something called Area 2D. Game overlays, including a game over screen and a general GUI, which will include an inventory system, which will use resources, a profile, and a quest system. We'll go through how to customize the themes and nodes in Godot throughout many built-in features, such as buttons, progress bars, and panels. To find the final project files, uh, click the link down below to find fill out your email and you'll be sent the download link for the project. Now, without further ado, enjoy the course. And if you're interested in learning more, check out my course, Godot Genesis, down below as well. Welcome, everyone, to your first uh, lesson in this RPG series. I'm very excited to bring you guys this course. Uh, so let's just get started right away. Now, before we get started, I want to highlight that we're going to be using a few different um, asset packs and art from different places. Uh, I'll link all of them down below. Um, but just to highlight some of the main ones, we'll be using this one specifically for the uh, ground and the tile set. We're going to use a lot of the uh, Admiran's art. So shout out to Admiran, by the way. He actually ended up uh, giving us a lot of freebies specifically for this course. Um, and I'll link all of them down below, but definitely check out some of his other packs. Uh, he has a lot of good stuff. He has a lot of UI and uh, items and uh, stuff that's paid, but he also has a lot of freebies. So definitely check them out. Um, and then also we'll be using uh, this GUI for our well, GUI in our game. So you can see it's quite nice. It's a pretty nice border, has a lot of things that we'll use. And lastly, uh, that's pretty much it for the art. So let's get started right away. and start our project. So the first thing we'll do is if you see, or if you open Godot and download Godot, you should see something similar to this. Now in Godot, um, sometimes they like to switch things around and they might move the new button, but you should see a new button somewhere on your screen. Now at this point, we can browse and decide where to put this. I'm going to put this in my desktop. So I can select the folder and I'm going to rename this to YouTube RPG tutorial. Uh, so I'll just say tutorial. And we can hit create folder. And that will create a new folder for us. Now, for these three renderers, generally speaking, they're all pretty straightforward. Mobile is well for mobile. Forward plus is usually used for 3d graphics, which we're not going to really be doing. So most likely we'll be using compatibility. So that's what we'll use. Now for the git control, if you know, never plan on putting this up on GitHub or any sort of git, uh, you can just select none. Otherwise, I'm going to select Git. I'm actually going to put this project up on GitHub uh, later. Now, if you guys want to download the final project, uh, you just go down below, fill out the uh, subscription form, and I will send you uh, the project over email. So let's hit Create and Edit, and our project will be created here. And once it's created, we can minimize the uh, entire thing a little bit we can find our assets folder. Now I've put everything into this assets folder, so I can just drag it and pop it in. Now you might see a little difference, right? So I have a few things that you might not have, but that's okay. We'll go through how to get everything and uh, we'll go through all those things later uh, throughout the course. So right now you will start with the character pack. So make sure you download the character pack from the description down below. Uh, and that should be mostly all you'll need for this episode. So let's also add two more folders. We're going to add a scenes folder, and this will contain our scenes. Now, if you don't know what scenes are, don't worry just yet, but we'll get into that. And then next, we'll create a scripts folder. Now, a scripts folder is going to contain scripts. All right. Now, on the top, we're going to head over to the 2D scene. And in here, this is where our 2D uh, world resides, essentially. Now, in here, we're going to start with our 2D uh, platform world or world itself, not platform, sorry. So we're going to click 2D scene on the top left. And now we should have a 2D scene. Now, if you don't click the right one, that's okay. You can always just right click it and change type. And you can see here that we have a lot of nodes. If we click that X, we have a lot of different nodes. Now, what are nodes? Nodes are essentially the building blocks of objects that we'll be using for our game. 
So there's a lot of different kinds, and we'll be going through a bunch of different ones throughout the series. But Node 2D is essentially a piece of paper where we can start drawing on it. Okay, so in here, we can actually double click and re rename this to World. And we can hit Control S or Command S, whatever, if you're on Mac. And we can go to Scenes, and we can put our world into Scenes. And now you can see on the bottom left, we have this new scene called world.tscn. Now TSCN stands for scene, and this is essentially a scene or a place where we have things or have objects in it. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I start adding things in, this would be my game. So if I actually go to the top right and I hit play, we can select current and this will play my game. Now there's nothing in here, but let's say we can drag in our sprite 2D or this uh, icon. And if I hit play, we now see an icon in my world. Now I don't want this. Uh, in fact, what we're gonna do though, is if I zoom in, you can see it's a little blurry. And the worst part about this is that if I go to my villager and let's say I drag in one of these guys, you can see that this guy is also kind of blurry and that's not really what we want. So what's the problem? How do we fix this? In our project settings, we'll go to general filter settings and search up filter, go to texture, default texture filter, and we'll select nearest. Now we'll close this. And now you can see that my uh, sprite is no longer pixelated or it is pixelated, but uh, properly pixelated, right? So let's close this or both of these guys uh, and we can just click okay. Now what we'll do is we will add a character body 2D. Now this character body 2D acts as a character. Now, what is this character? Well, it's gonna be our player. So we're gonna rename this to player. Now we're gonna need a few things and you can even see that we have an error here. Now, what is this error? It's telling us that we need a collision shape 2D uh, to define it as a shape. Okay, so let's add a collision shape 2D by clicking the plus button, searching it up. And we can see here, we have two options. We have collision shape polygon or collision shape 2D. Now we'll just do the collision shape 2D because it's easier to deal with. So we can give it a shape and I'll give it a capsule shape. All right, now in our capsule or in our player, we can go to the top or select the player and we can hit the uh, little script icon, this guy. And now you can see this new thing has popped up. We have a few options. We have languages. There's only one right now though. So GD script, which is very similar to Python. Uh, it's kind of like Java and Python, I would say, had a baby. Um, and then we also have a template. Now the template, this one, is actually for platformers and that's not what we want. So we're gonna select object empty or node default. Uh, if you do object default or empty, uh, it'll just have nothing in the script, but you'll see. Uh, so now the script itself, I wanna save this, well, in the scripts folder. So I'm gonna actually create a new folder in here called player. And now you can see the path where that uh, script will be saved. So I can open and create. And here we have our very first script. And there's nothing in here except for one line that says extends character body 2D. Now this essentially extends or takes the class of character body 2D. Now there's a lot of words that might be uh, confusing, but class essentially is a, a subject of a big object. So it essentially defines a bunch of things for us. And there's a lot of functions within that class that we can use and utilize to allow us to use it and create our game. Now, if you're curious about how to get here, like I just did, if you hold control and left click on something that is highlighted and click it, it will take you to the documentation. Alternatively, another way you can go to the documentation is if you go to the actual object, right, so um, this is the player, and hit the docs on the right. Here it is, and it'll open the documents. You can read through it and there's a lot of helpful functions, uh, but don't worry, you're, it's really uh, confusing, but we'll go through it one by one uh, together, okay? So, okay, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna add movement. So how do we do this? Well, it's actually not too hard. What we'll do is we'll add a physics process function like so, the so func physics process delta. And now what we can do is we can actually get input. Now, how do we get input? Well, okay, let's create this variable called input vector. And this will be equal to input dot get action strength. Now in here, 
I can put in uh, a thing that will essentially check to see if I'm pressing it. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna do UI, UI right. And now what I can do is I can actually take this and copy paste it right here. But now I'm gonna subtract these two from each other and change this to left. Now, what does this do? What is this? Well, essentially what we're doing is we're checking to see if I'm pressing right here, and then I'm checking to see if I'm pressing left, and then I'm subtracting them. Now, what is this input vector? Well, what I can do is I can print input vector, input vector, and I can hit play. And if I press nothing, you can see it's being printed zero. Now, if I click left, now I can see negative one. And if I click right, I can see one. Now that's pretty useful because now what I can do is I can take my self, the body, and move myself depending on that input vector. I got There's a lot of ways I can do this. I can say position plus equals input vector. Um, so let's try this. But first, we should probably want to add a, um, a, a sprite to our player, right? So let's drag in our icon sprite and drag it under our player here. And let's move our sprite by clicking this guy to move mode. And let's move him to the middle of the screen. And if I hit play, I will get an error. Uh, and that is because this is actually a one digit uh, input. So we're gonna change it to position x, so dot x. And now you can see I can move left and right. Now this is kind of messy and it doesn't really work always properly. And we don't actually wanna move the position. In fact, what we'll do instead is we're gonna use something called velocity. Now this is much easier and this is much better. In fact, we don't even need to add to it. We'll actually make it equal to it and we'll multiply by delta and then times, let's say 400. Now this won't actually work because now we also need a move and slide function. So in order to use velocity in Godot, we need to have move and slide, which is a built-in function from character body 2D. So if now I hit play, you can see I do move, but very slowly. So I might want to increase the speed here. Uh, 4,000 might actually be too much. So let's do 1,000. Maybe that will give me a good number. Nope, okay, let's do 5,000. All right, there we go. Now we have a bit more smooth movement. So now you can see that I can move right and left. But what about the other side, up and down? Well, if I duplicate this and I name this X, and this y, I can change this to down, and then the other one to up. We'll change this to up. Now you might be wondering though, why is the up on the right side? Why are we subtracting up on the right side, right? That doesn't really make sense because here we have the right, the positive on the left side. Well, um, in Godot, you actually, if you notice, if you go to the 2D, you can actually see that the negative is on the top. Usually an X and Y axis, the, the positive is on the right, which it is on the X axis here. You can see 1000 or 1500. But on the downwards, usually you have a negative. But in Godot, it's actually reversed on the Y axis. So the negative is upwards. So if I wanna go up, I have to actually subtract from my velocity. So in this case, we have it uh, negative. Now, instead of doing this, what we can do is we can take this and call something called vector two. And in this, we're gonna put our vector, input vector X, and then our input vector Y. And this will create a 2D uh, vector, so a X and Y coordinate that we can move around in. Now, if I hit play, I'm gonna get an error. So we can read what it says, invalid set get uh, X. All right, what does this mean? type vector. Okay, so here, right here, I'm trying to set uh, the velocity x to a vector two, which doesn't make sense. I wanna delete that and just set the velocity. And now we have eight directional movement. Awesome, we now have eight directional movement with essentially four lines of code, which is pretty good. All right, congratulations, you just finished your very first uh, piece of code. You've created a little player that moves. In the next video, uh, we'll be getting started with the animation and some actual sprites. So we're gonna delete our uh, kind of ugly icon here. 
and then we'll start implementing some of the animations and stuff. Okay. So I will see you all in the next lecture or in the next video.